Hi, my name is Sum. And my name is Kalina. Together, we are Coffee Project New York. We own several coffee shops in New York City with a roastery and we teach coffee skills to coffee professional and coffee aficionados alike. Today we're in our Specialty Coffee Association uh, Premier Training Campus and we will be making every espresso. Well, almost every espresso based drink. We're definitely going to be making all the classics, um, some more fun drinks, but definitely by the end of this, you will be able to walk comfortably into a coffee shop and identify most of the drinks on the menu. We have two different types of espresso machine in here. This is an automatic espresso machine and this is a manual espresso machine. An automated uh, espresso machine has a steam wand that's built in. You use the steam wand to froth milk and you'll be able to make uh, drinks such as cappuccinos and lattes. And the porter filter is a part of this machine. In the porter filter, you'll be able to see a basket with very, very fine uh, holes. And we use a temper to create a compact coffee bed and extract espresso. We have two kinds of scales here for consistency. First, we have to measure how much espresso that we're putting in into the portafilter. Secondly, we'll need the scale to measure how much water that goes through the portafilter and yield as espresso in the final cup. We have two different type of grinders, a manual hand grinder and an automated grinder. So this is a nut box. All the coffee grinds that are stuck in your portafilter is really compact together. You need something to heat on, therefore your puck falls off. So you also need espresso beans. It's roasted slightly longer than usual. The beans that we use today, it is of a medium roast. But remember, you can pick any beans that you like and make it into an espresso because espresso is a brewing method and not just the beans. Espresso, manual. So espresso, by definition, is actually a brewing method that uses pressure to push water through a compact coffee bed. You actually don't need a really expensive espresso machine in order to achieve that result. We're gonna use a hand grinder for this manual espresso machine. Awesome. They should feel somewhat like sand powder. Hmm. The Specialty Coffee Association, SCA, would actually ask for you to brew an espresso using a 1 to 1.5 to 1 to 2.5 coffee to water ratio. I'll be using 17 grams of espresso. So the funnel above it is half full. Even it out by just shaking it around. Tempting. So now I have fully prepared the puck. We're gonna start extraction. Place the puck right here. This is an anti-water flow funnel, which I'm gonna attach it on the top. The whole purpose is to build a chamber for us to create that pressurized water going through the compressed coffee bed. I preheat my kettle water ahead of time, and this is actually at 200 Fahrenheit. Rough measurement, there's a tiny line in there where I can actually put it in. to so somewhat at the line. Mm -hmm. Attach this little handle here into it. Start, push. I'm actually yielding this at 30 gram with uh, the time about 32 seconds. Different pressure will actually give you a different uh, sort of taste profile. For a standard espresso shot, usually you get about nine bars. I am currently using my whole body weight <laughs> to press. And look, it has a really nice texture, crema, the thinner, uh, clearer line. That's what we call the crema. Crema essentially is all the coffee oil and gas that was built up from the pressure of extraction. And at the bottom of it, that is where the coffee is. Instead of just drinking out of the cup with the crema, some people shake it, or I like it with a spoon. Give it a stir. Slurp. <sighs> Delicious. You get to taste a lot more aroma fragrance and also the flavor of the espresso if you do the slurping. An espresso shot um, should always be balanced. You should have a build out of acidity and then it should be balanced out with sweetness, uh, nuttiness and some chocolate note at the end. Espresso machine. A lot of um, busy people who in the morning they just want a very consistent shot of espresso. They will just 
program in a way that's a single button, that's a double button. First of all, you want to make sure you have your portal filter. We already pre-dosed it, so there you go. We're doing a double shot. It's pre-weighed at about 14 grams of coffee. You want to turn either clockwise, counterclockwise, whichever is easier for you, but make sure you don't do this. I just want to make sure that they're distributed nicely and evenly. Clean the sides of the porter filter. It also comes with a little temper. Hold the temper like you would hold a doorknob and just go straight down. You want to be able to create a even flat coffee bed. Usually we do a test test. It shouldn't fall out. Lock it in. It's usually a up and a twist motion. Once you have the portal filter lock in, put your cup in and make sure we tear our scale. And there you go. Your espresso will be ready in less than 30 seconds. And voila. You can see that it has a lot more crema compared to what I did. I probably have pressed the level a little bit less of pressure compared to this machine over here. You always want to take a spoon, stir them all together. If you're getting a light roast coffee or a medium roast coffee, you might get a slightly thinner layer of crema and that's totally normal. And sip. <gasps> mm. Dopio. There are different ways to pull an espresso shot to yield a different flavor profile. And we're gonna start right now with pulling a doppio, which means uh, double in Italian. This is usually what you'll get in a coffee shop when you order any espresso-based drinks. You're probably getting something in between 30 to 40 grams of coffee. When you order an espresso in coffee project, just by saying, hey, can I get an espresso? It will be default double espresso. We're gonna hold a double espresso by grinding the coffee. Pre-dose at 14 gram, and even temp. And my coffee automatically stops at 43 grams. Beautiful crema, beautiful cascade. Because of the sheer volume of a double shot, it is definitely uh, double the amount of caffeine. Lungo. A lungo is a prolonged extraction. We're using a bigger cup of espresso. And for people who usually order a lungo, they usually would like to taste a little bit more of the roast profile uh, compared to just like the bean profile. You get a lot more of the sugar browning flavor like uh, chocolate, caramel, or hazelnut. These are the taste notes that comes from extraction in a later cycle of the shot. We're still gonna use the dose of a double espresso. Even distribution. 90 degree. We actually programmed the single shot to be a lungo shot. So now we're actually pulling almost double the amount of uh, volume that came out um, in the double shot. For a double espresso, we are extracting between a 20 seconds to a 30 second shot. With the longo, it is prolonged to close to about 40 seconds. At the end of the day, when you are dialing in a, an espresso shot, it's all governed by taste. When we are extracting espresso for a longer period of time, Whatever we're yielding is actually the roast profile a little bit more. What you get from the sugar browning process uh, during extraction. So you get a little bit more of the chocolate, the caramel, uh, the hazelnut, lower acidity, lighter body. It's meant to be like a sipper instead of like what we all used to an espresso being like in a shot. Ristretto. So ristretto is essentially uh, an espresso shot that you're pulling with a finer grind size, yielding a smaller cup of espresso. You want to make sure you're using a finer grind size, so we're going to go ahead and adjust that just a teeny bit. Whenever you adjust a grind size, always, always remember to perch your grinder. You're like, Kalina, that's a waste. Uh, is because you want to be able to make sure that you're using the real grind size, the one that you just changed, and not the reminiscence of the previous shot. Ristretto is actually cutting short the brew time. Since we're stopping it a lot sooner, what you're getting is like a punch of acidity, sweetness, and a really concentrated cup of espresso. Really tiny, really thick. You see the ratio between the crema and also the coffee is almost one-to-one, -one, and it's a lot heavier in body. 
This ristretta shot is yield around 20 grams at around 20 seconds. As much as people believe that it has a very high level of caffeine, a shot of espresso actually has less caffeine compared to a 12 ounce cup of coffee. Americano. Hot water filled up. And then we top it up with a double shot of espresso. So you always fill the water in first before you put the shot in there. And that's because if you're doing it the other way around, you basically dissipate the layer of crema. And you defeat the purpose of an Americano. There you go. Hot water. You are totally in control of how much water you want in your cup of Americano. And down. So once you get your double espresso shot, all you gotta do is just pour it right into your cup. And now you can see how the crema stays afloat. You still retain all this quality that you get from an espresso. The boldness, the punch, and then that creaminess. But now it's a bigger drink. Portado. Two shots of espresso and then top with equal amount of steamed milk a favorite among a lot of baristas because you still get that you know punch of espresso in there uh, but it's sweetened by you know the same amount of milk. Cortado also comes with another name. Sometimes if you go to a coffee shop and you see the word Giobrata, it's the name of this cup. All right, so we have our double shot of espresso. You want to first let the water that's built up in your steam one out. So you're gonna turn it on just to release most of the water. Once you see steam, you can stop. And when you're frothing, a uh, few rule of thumb. It's gonna take a few seconds for it to kick in, but we buried the steam one in there. You always want to anchor uh, your spout on the steam one, so it kind of guides the movement of your steaming. And you also want it to go in at a certain angle. Take a look at how the tip of the steam wand is hovering above the milk. You want to make sure that is sort of buried in the milk. You want to just slowly slide down, break the surface a little bit, so the steam wand is able to push some air into your milk, and that is what's going to essentially create a microfoam, that creaminess that you get from a cappuccino or a latte. Once it starts turning hot, you are gonna slowly glide back in, incorporate the air that you added in earlier into your milk, and that's what's gonna create that silky smooth uh, milk texture. All right, when it's slightly hot to touch, you're gonna turn it off. Clean your steam one and release whatever milk that is hot inside. Okay. Sometimes when you're frothing, uh, you'll get some big bubbles in there. Just hover your hand and tap and you're gonna get silky smooth milk. Something that looks like shiny paint. It sort of lingers uh, on the side of the wall. You are going to fill. So this is the Cortado. Two parts of espresso, which is a double shot and also equal parts of milk to fill up the glass. At Coffee Project, most of our baristas will often end a cup of espresso-based drink with latte art. It's still gonna taste good regardless of whether you can pour a, an art or not, but your eyes eat first. It's very chocolatey, nutty, but at the same time it's sweet and it has a lot of stone fruit from the roast profile itself. This is a lot of coffee professionals' favorite drink. Piccolo latte. For Cortado, we're using a double shot of espresso as base, but for a piccolo latte, we're actually using a ristretto shot. Ristretto shot is gonna give you a lot more sweetness and a little bit high in acidity just because it's a little bit cut shot and concentrated. So if you want something sweeter and a little bit more high in acidity, you would go for a piccolo latte. So I'll be cutting it at about 20 grams. So when you're frothing, you don't want that screeching high peach. This is the sound of the froth. <laughs> you have Probably one third of the beverage itself is espresso and you will fill up with froth um, warm milk. Classic heart. Piccolo latte is not much found in a lot of coffee shops in New York City. If the coffee shop has Australian culture to it, then you probably will be able to find a piccolo latte. Cappuccino. Two shots of espresso as a base, followed by a frothier milk on the top slightly stronger uh, than a latte because it has slightly less milk and a little more foam in there. 
So pulling a double shot of espresso on the side. We're gonna start with the same procedure and we're gonna just prolong this significantly longer compared to a latte. Once it starts getting warmer, dive that steam one into the milk, incorporating all the air that we added in earlier. So you get a thicker, um, foamier milk texture compared to a latte. A lot of times you will see barista or half, mix them all a little bit, and then continue to pour. It's gonna give you even creamier cup of espresso and cappuccino. And when I drink a cappuccino, I like to do this. And... Mm. When a latte drinker wants more coffee flavor in their coffee, they will start going down to ordering cappuccino. Flat white. If I like the flavor of cappuccino, but I find it a little bit too foamy and uh, a little bit too milky, what can I go for? A flat white. It's between the amount of milk of a cortado and a cappuccino. Two shots of espresso in a five ounce cup. It's a smaller drink compared to a cappuccino. Broth, milk. There is a shorter aeration time. So meaning we're adding slightly less air compared to a cappuccino. Fairly similar to the way we would froth a latte. You're trying to create a vortex in your milk. Clean your steam one, close your steam one. With a shorter aeration time, uh, you are letting less air into your milk, uh, which will create slightly less foam. We're trying our best not to break the crema. So you're gonna start pouring at a higher level and you're incorporating the milk into the drink as much as you can. And then at the end, you will just slightly mark it with a tiny little heart. It's a texture that is like softer, uh, but there's not a lot of foam on the top. So when you sip it, uh, you're actually getting a stronger uh, first sip of coffee. And that's what a lot of people are looking for when they order a flat white. Macchiato. Two shots of espresso with one ounce of milk into it. A double shot. And then we will froth our milk. What you do is just taint the espresso with a dollop of milk. A traditional macchiato. A macchiato will definitely be a lot bolder than all the espresso-based drink with milk that we've made so far. It has the strong punch, and so when you take a sip of it, you will get all the crema, espresso flavor, and then the sweetness of the milk will cut through. Latte macchiato. Macchiato is like tainting something. With the traditional macchiato, we're tainting the espresso with milk. And now when we mention latte macchiato, we are tainting the milk with espresso. We are pulling a double shot. 10 ounces of hot milk. And the goal is to create that layer on the beverage by waiting for the foam to separate a little bit. And then you top it up with your espresso shot. This is the latte macchiato. When this drink is done right, you will have a layer of white foam right above your beverage. And then the color at the bottom is going to look like coffee. Breve. Breve is another form of milk that is made out of half and half. So in a coffee shop, you can actually ask for a breve latte, breve cappuccino, even a breve cortado. Double shot. Give it a little bit of air and uh, it should be enough. It's a lot heavier compared to whole milk or skim milk in general. This is a breve cappuccino. It tends to coat your mouth a little bit more um, and it leaves a longer aftertaste, almost like a drinking ice cream.